Mahaba, and welcome to this week's episode of Metro Live. So, as you can see from the logo changing colour and this awful shirt, it's Pink Week here at GEMS Metropole. So I've been very fortunate in being in classes across the four phases, and I have seen paintings, pictures, podcasts, blogs, newspaper reports, debates, everything to promote breast cancer awareness across the school. But also on that note, and using our social media platform, we have two secondary school students who will be interviewing two very special members from our community today. We have MJ and Lena from Prink Ribbon Crafters on the show, and they will be interviewed by our secondary students with some really tough questions about the experiences they've had with their own battles with cancer, but also more about the charity and what work can be done and how we can support more. So let's meet our very special guests, MJ and Lena. I'm MJ. Um... I'm 50 years old <laughs> and um, I'm from the US, from uh, New York. Um, uh, as I said, I'm Lena and um, uh, I'm one of the co-founders of the group called Pink Ribbon Crafters. Um, we started in 2015 and uh, we are a group of volunteers who support breast cancer patients by funding, uh, by uh, selling our handmade items where the proceeds goes to breast cancer patients who can't afford it. Um, what like inspired both of you to work on this type of project? What inspired me is when I was going through um, cancer and going through chemotherapy, this was all here in, in Dubai, uh, I found an organization called Breast Friends, and Breast Friends was very good in terms of having me be able to speak to people who were like-minded going through a lot of the things that I was going through. And through that organization, I found the Pink Ribbon Crafters. And, you know, through, I think, volunteering and through supporting others, you actually gain strength yourself um, in terms of understanding and sympathizing with people who are going through this. And nothing feels better um, whether it's cancer, whether it's other charitable organizations, to help others. To help others really brings joy to your life. And, and that's how I feel um, when I uh, do volunteer um, through Pink Ribbon Crafters and, and this organization. And also, Lena is a fabulous uh, leader <laughs> who uh, started the, this group. I've met a lot of lovely women, uh, such as MJ, and I also met a lot of ladies uh, back in 2015 who are also having the same idea or the same um, concept, but we were all working individually. So what inspires me is that we united all together and we decided to come up uh, with a group, which we now call Pink Ribbon Crafters, and uh, listening to their stories every day and having them backing up and uh, each other and supporting each other, whether you had a bad day, a good day, or a creative day where they wanted to just play with colors and beads and so uh, the fact that we are all together in this and we all have the same mission and the same uh, values, which is supporting and serving other women who are unfortunate or less privileged by not having the financial um, capabilities to uh, cover the treatments. And the fact that we are all in this mission together, that's what keeps me doing more and wanting to help more ladies, whether through fundraising or raising awareness such as today. <laughs> And you're going through cancer and chemotherapy and obviously when you're telling your family and all of that, a lot of times you'll get certain negative emotions, you'll feel a bit down sometimes, sometimes you won't feel mentally strong enough. So how do you like remain positive throughout all of yeah. that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, first it's obviously not easy when you're going through something like that. Um, but you know, when you, for me, everyone's an individual but for me you know optimism is always the best medicine so you know when you look at a glass you see it as half empty or you see it as half full and while you receive this information it's really important to try and stay optimistic about your treatment optimistic about you know your future and the reason that it's really important is because negativity and certainly you can experience this in other things in your life, will cause stress, right? When you have stress in your body, what does that do? When sometimes you're stressed and you're anxious and things, 
then it also opens up for you to get sick. A lot of times you get colds or this is outside of COVID, <laughs> you know, when you have stress and you have anxiety. So when you are fighting, you know, cancer and you're receiving chemotherapy, it's really important to let the stress out of your body go so you can receive the medicine so you have a stronger immune system to get stronger within your body. Uh, second, what uh, MJ said about positivity and um, how to stay positive, I, I agree with everything she said. And as she said, of course, it's a very individual experience. So what can work for me might not work for MJ, might not work for someone else. Uh, but the, the overall highlight or let's say the overall guideline, if we're going to put like tips of how to be positive, is to find your inner strength because it's like entering your room. If it's completely messy, which is like the cancer situation, if it's a complete mess, uh, you have one of two choices. Either you leave this mess and you're going to live in this mess for some time. Or you decide to pick up things one by one and start with the small battles, the small, small action point that you can to pick up yourself and start being positive again. And once you start, it just the the the, uh, the rest of the treatments flows easily. It's just the start that is the most difficult part. Um, as long as you believe that there is a good end out, out of it, and as long as you have this faith that uh, there's always a positive outcome out of any, any situation, no matter how uh, negative or challenging it is. Uh, if you have the mindset that you're grateful for the fact that at least you're alive, you can afford the treatment, you are somewhere where you, uh, you have people who loves you, when you start counting your blessings, you will uh, realize that the obstacles or the challenges are not as big as much as the good things that you have in life. Do you have any advice you would give to young people who may have a family member that is battling with cancer or recovering from cancer? And I think the most important thing for young people is to talk about it. Feel free, ask questions. Talk about if it's you know a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle who's going through it. You definitely ask them questions because I know you might have some you know, anxiety or nervousness around what may or may not happen. And if you don't feel comfortable talking to them, talk to another parent, talk to an uncle. You can even talk to your teachers. The, the, I think the important thing is, is to don't hold it up inside of you, you know, express your feelings about what's happening and express them to somebody you feel comfortable with and find somebody to talk to. So I think to me that that's the most important. Like um, MJ said, that it's really hard on the young people that have their family members going through cancer. But how do you think they could help? Because a lot of the times you'll find that the people not going through cancer, all they want to do is help. They want to make it better. How do you think they could do that? Yeah, for, uh, uh, for me, I think there are different ways to help. And again, it's very individual experience. Uh, for myself, I thought, I'm, I was so happy that we had an open conversation about it, just like what MJ said, where uh, the family members speak about it and express their feelings and emotions about uh, such experience. But it's also important uh, from, uh, let's say, friends and uh, people who are not living with me to uh, accept that life will not always be about cancer. So cancer was in the background. We spoke about it. We acknowledge the fact that it's there but we still can enjoy life. It doesn't mean that it's the end. So one of the things that I would advise, once you let uh, out your feelings and you speak about it, don't let it be the center of your life. It can be in the background. We battle on it. Uh, we battle the cancer together, but at the same time, we enjoy going out. We enjoy doing things together. We enjoy the, the current moment because the current moment is so precious. And this, this is something that I kept on um, uh, expressing during my journey is that it's okay to, to talk about other things. Sometimes I wanted to have a silly chat about something else. I didn't want always to have a hug and someone cry and tell me, I'm sorry that you got cancer. Sometimes I just wanted to have fun, uh, go out with friends, have a nice meal outside, go to the beach. Uh, it's very important to be mindful 
and balance everything. So as much as sharing is very important, it's also important to uh, not forget about the things that makes you happy. Um, a while ago, you guys mentioned how a lot of things can be stressful, whether you have like cancer or not. Obviously, yes, it's important to stay optimistic and that's how you stay positive. But, you know, sometimes like, okay, even for us, when we have like an exam, it'll get really, really stressful and it's hard for us to eat well or sleep well or to maintain that type of well-being. So, like, what type of advice would you give just anyone in general? Because especially now that we're in this pandemic and everything's a bit harder online, you know, that sort of thing. What advice would you give about the whole stress and how to maintain your well-being? Well, I think maintain well-being, I think everyone will try and say, get good sleep, eat well, yeah. do exercise, right? Those are like the three. <laughs> you know, I think out, outside of that, um, is do things that you enjoy that take your mind away from your current world to control your stress. So an example, and this is, you know, a COVID example for me, um, you know, when we were in lockdown, something that I did that I haven't done in years, maybe since I was your age, is I got puzzles. <laughs> and I got these great like 1500 piece puzzles and I started doing these puzzles. Um, and I had so much fun doing uh, puzzles, which I would have never thought about, you know, doing that pre-COVID. But that's something where when you're engaged in that type of activity, your mind is so focused on what your task is at hand. Um, and that's just one type of hobby. It could be baking. It could be playing a musical instrument. It could be something, something that you will enjoy that really takes you away from you know your current world or environment because you're so focused within that hobby that you're doing um, and how i dealt with stress was to reconnect with a hobby that i used to love which is uh, crochet and crafting and for me it was kind of therapy crafting is my therapy because i ended up de-stressing or releasing any negative emotions through my little pieces that i was making uh, it has been scientifically proven that when you do something with your hand, whether, as uh, MJ said, whether it's puzzle, whether it's baking, whether it's playing music, it's kind of uh, meditation. It's kind of releasing any anger or stress or anxiety you might have. So this is, for me, the way I manage to de-stress. Obviously, the girls have interviewed me there, and they, they were fantastic, and you can hear how excited they are. But funny if you said a question earlier you said about how did you feel and i know when i originally thought that i was going to be the one interviewing both of you and i saw that you were you were cancer survivors as such and that's how it was put across like mr alex can you interview these cancer survivors i suddenly just froze and went well what do you ask someone that's that survived cancer and it's it's almost a, a stigma that comes like a, like a label sometimes do you is that something you find at all well, this is something that I wish we can change. Uh, the second you label that we had cancer, everything changes. Uh, people uh, get awkward, they feel uncomfortable, they feel that the conversation has to go into a certain direction. Well, in fact, I'm just exactly the person that I, I was just before my cancer experience. Of course, cancer has changed a lot of things in me, but I'm still the person who likes crochet. I'm still the person who likes to uh, who likes her food. Uh, I'm still the person who is a mother of a child. So um, one of the things that I would love people to connect with is that cancer is not um, it's not a disease. It's just a condition, a health condition. Uh, it does not change like uh, the person who was there just a couple of weeks before diagnosis, um, and. I think the most important thing is to accept people, even with their differences, whether they've lost their hair or they look different, uh, to accept the unknown and try to deal with it with, with, uh, with an open heart. What can we do more as a school to, to support that awareness? We've got Pink Week coming up and, and you'll see lots of schools, they, they do, everyone dresses up in pink and then the next week sometimes I feel like that's it it's we'll wait till next year what, what can we do more as a community and as a school to support 
you guys and the work you do, but actually that awareness. Lena, what do, what's your view on what we could do to support? Um, actually, for Gems Metropole, it has been a conversation with them throughout the year. And this is something I truly appreciate and admire, that it's one of the very few schools who understand that awareness is not only in October. And uh, it's one of the schools that understand that the support is not only by wearing the pink ribbon, which is also a good thing to do, and uh, it, it spreads the awareness. It's not only about being pink. It's uh, more about education. It's uh, more about uh, helping others by giving them the sense of uh, giving back to the community. For example, what we did today is something that we only did so far with the uh, Gems Metropole, where they involved the students into um, community work where they made them volunteer and uh, do the interview. So um, what I truly appreciate about GEMS Metropole is that they are looking into different ways where they can support throughout the year, whether it's uh, uh, monetary or it's emotionally, or even uh, with the, uh, currently because of the pandemic with the bare minimum at least, which is uh, spreading the message and using the power of social media which is something I truly appreciate and I'm sure all our volunteers do as well. Yeah, it's fantastic and I can't thank you both enough for coming and talking and I know everyone in the community will love seeing the interview with the students and you guys. I think they're getting bored of hearing from me but they, uh, they will really enjoy hearing from the students questioning you and they definitely questioned you with everything they could think of as well I think so but thank you both so much for doing this with us and we can't wait to share share this and share all the kind of stories next week as well and make sure that it's that this awareness really is driven throughout the whole school and community thank you so Great. much thanks thank a you. lot thank you thank you we'll speak to you later in the thank week you. thank uh -huh. you so much lovely to speak to two of our members of our community mj and lena there and to have the opportunity to be interviewed by our students from secondary but really using this platform to raise the profile of pink ribbon crafters the charity since 2015, they've raised over 665,000 dirhams for those patients that need the money to support them through their journey through their cancer. But also they raised 180,000 dirhams last year alone just to support those people in need. A charity built of 70 plus volunteers. We as a school work very closely with them and we want to continue raising the awareness for breast cancer through our community. So until next week, we hope you have a lovely week, a lovely pink week at that, but we will see you this time next week. Goodbye.